Hey y'all, my name is Marie. I'm over here at Backbone Homestead. This is a small homestead operation here with my family. I had a New Year's uh, resolution, I guess, this year. I don't typically do that, but you know, I was thinking to myself like, hey, we've got this property and there's a bunch of work that has to be done on it and I'll get to that here in a second. And I was like, if I'm going to be doing all this work anyways, I might as well just share it with other people who might be in a similar situation that we're in and give them some encouragement or maybe some advice and things like that along the way. And we can kind of grow and learn together. All those great things that YouTube provides or any other, if you're watching this on Rumble or anything like that, then we can be there and kind of help each other out along the way. Um, I want you to just kind of forgive me because my camera skills aren't that great and I am working with about a 10 year old camera here just kind of working with what I got and we're going to kind of grow together and see where this goes so I have no external microphones or anything like that so if you're picking up on some kind of background noises and things like that just kind of bear with me as this channel grows hopefully and we'll see how it goes from there. So basically, I'll give you kind of a little bit of a backstory here. So my husband and I moved here about five years ago. We're in zone 7B and we wanted to have a small homestead. He was in the army for uh, several years, infantry for about 13, and then got into the reserves and we wanted to come back home while he was in the reserves. So we found this property, it's about seven acres and um, started from scratch, like there was nothing here. It was just basically a house on an open field. We got some woods and we have a uh, large pond. I always call it a lake, it's actually a pond. But with that being said, um, decided that we wanted to kind of, you know, put our roots down here and get things kind of set up, et cetera, et cetera. And then turn around and um, he uh, was activated to deploy to the Middle East in 2020, right before the pandemic hit. So I'm working full time, went back to school full time. We've got kids taking care of the homestead, doing all this with him gone for a year. So that was a lot, got through that, you know, kind of gave myself a lot of grace with what I could handle and what I couldn't handle. So some things got, you know, put on the back burner and things like that. Fast forward to 2021 or sorry 2022 in June uh, peak of gardening season on June 4th we had a house fire and uh, it took several months for everything to be returned to normal again but as anyone knows as a gardener maybe you don't know but uh, June is a pretty intense time to have uh, your kitchen down and things like that and uh, essentially be scattered. My kids had to go live with their grandparents for a little while, about a month or so. And um, we had to stay with neighbors and coming back to check on chickens and dogs and all that good stuff while, like I said, still working. And uh, it was a lot. So the garden took a really big hit during that time. It was, um, I just couldn't do anything with it. So I, I couldn't really harvest anything. I couldn't get out there. Um, access to my tools wasn't really something that I could do. Uh, and therefore it turned into basically a jungle and um, all the areas around it essentially turned into a jungle or a junkyard, whatever you wanna call it. So basically we are now starting over again. Well, kind of over, but not fully over. But we are starting now to pick everything back up. Um, starting with this YouTube channel, I want people to see kind of what happens in these situations when, you know, things that are out of our control that maybe can really, you know, dampen your experience as a gardener or homesteader and things like that. And you just don't know how to start over again and you're like this is overwhelming I can't handle this and um, that's kind of why I wanted to share this YouTube channel and I also wanted to see for myself like where things were going to go you know um, at the end of the year and see all the progress we've made and uh, have that kind of documented so it's almost like a a, uh, a documented movie diary as as you will I guess we could put it that kind of way instead of just journaling it I'll be able to look back on this and kind of go wow you know that's a big change from, you know, January, et cetera. So hopefully we can learn together. But one other thing I wanted to say before I give you a tour of the property, well, I'll give you a tour of the garden area first and just like the basics. And then we'll kind of, as we go throughout this channel, show you some more things. But um, one thing that I really want to do this year, that's a little different than I would say your other YouTube home setters as far as, um, just doing garden tours and that type of thing. And they're great, don't get me wrong, I love several of them. They're amazing people, I get a lot of my information from them. But 
because I'm already having to research and watch other YouTubers and read books and you know pins and all that kind of stuff I really wanted to share um, some articles that I will be using along the way and uh, we're gonna kind of see how it works you know if you ever like pin something on Pinterest and you're like 12 months to a fully functioning homestead and does that really work and you know what that's a good question because I don't know either so we're gonna do it together like I'm gonna find some of these articles and I'm gonna try what they suggest and I'm gonna give you updates along the way and we'll just see if it works and see how it works for us and see if we have to change some things around or shuffle things and um, you know before and afters and all that good stuff so I really appreciate you guys joining me today and uh, walking through my homestead and hopefully joining me in on this journey uh, please like and subscribe help our channel grow and hopefully we can see everything kind of come to a fruition together so I'm gonna start here on the property this part is a little bit here let me actually uh, adjust this camera a little bit I got this thing kind of on this like kind of awkward not quite a tripod but a tripod thing so it's not the best thing to film on but we'll figure it out so if the picture is a little canted I apologize one second actually let's see if I can adjust this like so yeah one second oops yeah that should be better yeah that's a lot better let's do it like that cool all right anyways I'm gonna start here kind of in this garden area you know we have like over here is like our dog run that's kind of the dog run and this is kind of like the beginning of basically the like the um, the people area like the actual house um, separated from the actual homestead behind me is my husband's shop for kind of safety reasons I'll show you some of it but I'm not gonna show you all of it for right now but as you can see like kind of over here I mean we've got like that's an old folded chair thrown out here. We've got buckets. We've got bins full of wood. I mean, some of these things are just like Mosquito City, right? Like just these Rubbermaid bins that are just filled up with water now. We're going to have to clean all that out. And as some of you might know, you kind of start to hoard things as a homesteader because you're like, I don't know what I'm going to need and everything else. But it especially gets out of control when like your summer and months and things like that uh, went down for the count, right? Um, due to the fire, we weren't able to spend as much time out here focusing out here as we would like to. So I would really like to get a lot of these areas cleaned up. This is our old... Um, our old chicken coop I love this one we got this one from tractor supply it wasn't too bad had to assemble it paint it it was great for maybe about like four hens or so I think like it was advertised to hold something like upward to 12 and I'm just like no way dude look at look at how tight that space is it's like that ain't gonna fly so right now this coop is sitting out here because it's kind of like our quarantine coop when we get chickens from other people or roosters and things like that where we need to make sure that they're healthy before introducing them to our flock I'll put them in here or maybe if like a chicken isn't doing too well it was injured I'll kind of like you know quarantine it off over here so I can take care of it sometimes the injured chickens go into the actual um, garage uh, just so I can have a better eye on them so this is like the start of the garden area here we have the front gate my husband built this we're probably gonna be moving this around again just more pallets like containers soil the pine shavings got left out we've got this corrugated stuff from like some issues that we were having with irrigation so you can see like just a bunch of stuff in this shed i think this shed is like uh i believe it's like a 10 by 8 if i believe correctly it actually has a pretty decent amount of space um when you go into it so we store a lot of our feed bins and things in here and our tools, but we'll be reorganizing this a lot. But we have like a lot of our outdoor supplies and our bins. Sorry for how loud that is. Oh, hi, Scalper. Oh, this is my favorite chicken. She's a sweetie girl. Yes, she is. I know. How did you get out, sweetheart? Okay, I'm going to have to check on that because there is a new net that we put up so that they wouldn't get out. I'll talk about that here in a second. But yeah, so again, more barrels of stuff, traps from voles, I mean, just you name it. We're going to be starting really from a crazy spot here. And it's going to just, it's going to be a lot of work. I'm excited about it, and I'm not excited at the same time. Got some of our implements out here. They're all hungry. I need to feed them. But um, this is our chicken run. Um... We actually had, hopefully the sun's not in your eyes, we actually had an eagle attack a couple days ago and we lost 
one of our drakes, a bald eagle. We lost one of our drakes and four of our hens. So they're acting a little crazy, but we had to do kind of like this makeshift uh, netting thing. Come on, scalper. Chick, 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 chick. Come on. Come on. Chick, 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 chick. You gonna come on in? Chick, 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 chick. Come on. Come on. Chick, 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 chick. Let's see if she's gonna come on in. Come on, chick, 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 chick. That's a good girl. Yeah. Good girl. So, we've got this nice big chicken run. These posts are about eight feet apart. Um, so you can see that it's just a huge space. Um, we actually got this coop right here from our neighbors. They were moving and um, they weren't going to raise any birds. And when they moved to here, they are like, hey, uh, we saw that you had chickens. Would you like this coop? I said, absolutely. Because that other coop was so much smaller. It's got this nice auto door on it. And um, we're really happy with it. But we've got, um, my husband made this cute little uh, water hanger. As you can see, I need to actually fill up some more water for the for the ladies and the gentlemen, excuse me. Sorry, new bay. Um, but yeah, so over here, we got that. And then there's actually another gate right here, as you can see, that goes into the um, garden. Scalper is a, oh, there she is, cute little lady. You might be like, why did you name that poor chicken? Such a weird name. Well, I will tell you why we did that. So, I'll turn this around. I'll tell you why we named her that. Uh, Scalper has kind of a crazy story. So, my husband came out, or came into the house, and he's like, Marie, come quick. There's like, one of the chickens is in rough shape. I need you to take a look at her. And I was like, okay. So, I came in, I came outside and she had gotten out of the run, gotten into the garden area where the, where the ducks were and, and the ducks were mad that she was like in their space. So she was trying to get out and she kept going under the wire over and over again and actually like pretty much scalped her head. So like a bunch of her head was like peeled back and um, I was like, oh, I don't know. It's like, I don't know if this chicken's going to make it. So got the veterans and spray, sprayed her down, um, brought her inside, wrapped her in a towel, put her in my lap, was kind of uh, feeding her um, water out of the, one of my kids' is like toy teacups or something like that. And we just kind of sat there and watched Halloween movies together for like hours. And then I got the, um, the stock tank set up in the garage to kind of quarantine her off because the other chickens would definitely start attacking her because there was just so much red on the top of her head there's just no way you can put them back in with the flock like that so we put her in the garage she was in there for weeks until everything completely healed and um that's why i call her scalper but now it's kind of funny because after her head healed back she's got these feathers that kind of can't sideways a little bit and she's like they never grow smooth anymore because the way that the skin formed back in her head so she's got these like this little crazy side mohawk thing going on which is like the sweetest chicken ever um probably because we took so much time to take care of her i'm going to turn this camera back around uh, so that you can kind of join me going into the gate here we're going to kind of redo this a little bit because there's just a lot so oh, we have this old <laughs> lot of stuff on the ground right now we got tea posts out here so the duck run used to be kind of like this latticed tea posted in area right here next to the shed because for a while they actually lived in the shed. So we have this back door here, this like dog door right there. And that's where they used to come out from and they loved it. We might move them back. I'm not sure yet. Um, just got this dirty little kiddie pool that we flip every single day and, you know, give them fresh water to, to swim around in. But as you can see, this is totally crazy. So. These tall, dead plants that you're seeing are called uh, dog fennel. They take over like crazy. And it's kind of weird being out here after everything is said and done. The fire, now winter time. And it's almost like time stood still, right? You can tell where I was in the garden when kind of everything happened and everything had to come to a stop. I mean, like I've got my twine here for tying up my tomatoes. My tomatoes were across here and um, you can just kind of see how that happened. 
so there's the there's the run door the other door I was telling you to go that goes to the other run so you can see we got these kind of raised beds we did a little bit of this pea gravel stuff between it I don't think I would recommend that to be honest with you uh, it, the weeds get a little crazy um, in between the beds like that and I think it would have been much easier had we been able to mow between the beds versus like having the pea gravel or mulching it something so we'll see how we treat that as we go kind of have like this old uh, grill arbor thing I started kind of storing some of the equipment out underneath it lanterns on the ground there is the new duck coop and a little boat um, it is not operational right now we'll walk over there um, so you can kind of see it uh, it does not work right now I gotta like uh, fix the pump of course like I said yet another thing that's just like a nice mosquito bed so we got to get this all fixed up but the ducks love coming in here and playing in this boat and this is kind of like their little boat house you know that is um goes into my husband's shop and as we're going to keep kind of walking through here I'll show you some more stuff it's not a whole lot to look at I think what I really want to show is just the state that it's in um to kind of give that impression of like what we're working with and how crazy this is and trying to get this all cleaned up and back to an actual growing state got some extra wood back there on pallets and fencing here's where we keep like the tea posts and the extra pavers and stone and cattle panels and all that crazy stuff so you can see tons of tall weeds right got all this like crazy tall dried out grass um you can see my uh, bootstrap farmer highly recommend those i'm not sponsored in any kind of way but my bootstrap farmer um seed starting stuff and um i was probably in the middle of transitioning plants out and things and yeah and it kind of just all paused i'm not gonna lie going through something like that can make you feel kind of depressed so you get like stuck not wanting to not really wanting to do anything you're like oh my garden is like overwhelming now where do i even begin i've got a green stock tower out here that's just like kind of crazy and believe it or not under these crazy grasses is like flagstone because i had eventually had hoped like in this section that it have like a sitting area that i could really enjoy the garden also got my tripod i, can't, I don't know if you can see that can you see that tripod right there that's <laughs> That's a tripod waterer, and of course, that it was just obviously taken by the garden. So much stuff is just like taken over and overrun by the garden. You can see the very weedy beds filled with grasses. There's some more of my bootstrap farmer stuff, my kneeling pad, obviously. Got these really awesome cattle panels though, and I will say on this trellis here, I was able to harvest off some cantaloupe um, just because it came in so later, so much later in the season that I was able to do that. Um, even like it was after the fire stuff had all been uh, fixed. Over there too, we have some loofah gourds. Uh, some of them I had pulled off. Some of them I did not get to in time. That's okay. Um, got some green stuff growing right there. You know, I don't even know. Man, that looks kind of like. It might be a uh, fennel. I think I had fennel in here. Oh, that's kind of crazy. I didn't even know anything was like growing back. You gotta forgive me as I crashed down here. I had leg day yesterday at the gym. Oh my gosh. What do we got in here? I think that is. Whoa. That is. That is wild. You know, it's so it always it always surprises me. You know, these things that kind of pop up like that. Um, even if you're not trying, right? Um, the garden just has a way of, of taking care of itself, you know, even in the chaos. So as you can see, here, let me get around this cattle panel. Just lots, just very, very weedy. Um, these like sections back in here, like you see these kind of four post fences behind this was my old compost pile. Haven't decided exactly where I want to put a new compost pile. Really want to decide soon, but I'm not quite at that step yet. So we're just going to kind of walk through here um show you some more oh look okay. at you can see these okras look at that they're so like all these pods that are like fully dried out isn't that crazy probably full of seeds too like yeah look at all those seeds oh, can you see the seeds look at that how crazy is that 
So yeah, so these are like okras that like I just couldn't get to, to either fry them up or pickle them or anything like that. You can see some dead uh, Brussels sprout stalks over there. See a big dead sunflower stalk. If you're wondering what that canopy thing is, um, I had originally got it for my dogs. They hated it, so I put it in here for the ducks, and the ducks used it for a little while, and now they're like, I don't know, like, I don't like it anymore. So I was like, okay, guess I'm going to give, give it away or something. But yeah, we got like, I don't know what that is. Just like a big bush. Who knows? Just kind of growing through. I think that was another. No, that's not sunflower. Oh man, I don't know what that is. Sorry for my shadow too. It's the time of day that I'm filming this. We had some Mexican sour gherkins on here. Um, kids love them. They could pop them off, eat them right on the spot. Is really cool. Very prolific in this area, and um, they're just so much fun. It's like a little secret garden when you have those things growing. I think these were noodle beans this year. It's the first time I've ever grown noodle beans. Um, really neat. Uh, they're fun to watch grow. Yet again, another thing, like a kid favorite, right? They love giant vegetables and especially when they like take over these trellises, it's really neat. So I had a whole bed of tomatoes in here. Um, I'll have to clear all this out. And then of course, back in there, um, I think if you can see through the dog fennel, we've got some old panels that need to be picked up and like, I think that's the old bag of pea gravel with the existing pea gravel. That's Dapper Dan. He is uh, very happy. Got those nasty little ladies drinking out of the dirty water. Go swim in the clean water. What's wrong with you guys? Come on now. Ugh, they do it every time. I can't remember their names. My daughter's named them, but I can't remember what the females' names are. But, but yeah, that's Dapper Dan. Got named by my husband because the white collar is just like almost perfectly striped across his neck. He's always looking super dapper. Thanks y'all for coming along with me today and taking a look at the uh, homestead. You know, I really hope it inspires some of you who are maybe going through similar things and you're feeling overwhelmed by what's going on and how much you have to do. And hopefully we can work together and uh, come up with solutions and uh, support and um, just really see where things go in a year. You'd be surprised. I think this is going to be a completely different place come April, May. It's going to completely transform and um, she'll be, it's going to be a lot of work. Homesteading is always a lot of work. It's very rewarding work. Uh, I think that um, people who go into this type of work just really enjoy, you know, feeling like you did something with your day. So um, I'll leave on that note and I hope to see you guys in future videos. So if you could please like and subscribe and support my channel and uh, support what I'm trying to do here, I really appreciate it. And I'd love to hear in the comments what you think and ideas that you have for future videos or things that you'd like to see. And uh, we'll just uh, see how it goes. All right, y'all have a good one. Bye.